Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Math School Learn to Succeed. In this channel, I'll be teaching you Karnataka Board Class 10th SLC Insert Math. In today's video, let us solve the example 5 and 6 from section 10.3, chapter number 10, Quadratic Equations. In my previous video, we did the introduction part for the section 10.3 and also we solved the example number 3 and 4. If you have not watched that video, please find the link in the description box below or click the i button above. So before we begin our video today, please like and subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the bell button below to get the latest updates of my videos. Example number 5 from chapter 10 quadratic equation is find the roots of the quadratic equation 3x square minus 2 root x plus 2 is equal to 0. In my previous video, we solved the similar kind of problem that is example number 3 and 4 where we found out the roots of the given quadratic equation by the method of factorization or uh, splitting the middle term. The same method we are going to apply to this question also. So quadratic ge equation given here is 3x square minus 2 root term is there that is 2 root 6x plus 2 is equal to 0. So let us see how to split this middle term that is in the form of a root. First of all let us write down the a, b and c value. The standard form of a given quadratic equation will be ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0. If you compare these with the standard equation we can say that the a value or the coefficient of x square is equal to 3 then the coefficient of x term that is b is equal to 2 root 6 and c value is equal to 2. Now to split the middle term so let us take the product product is equal to ac that is a into c which is 3 into 2 is 6 and now we are going to take sum since the sign of c is plus if the sign of c is minus we will take the difference here we will take the sum since the sine of c is plus so sum will be equal to b that is nothing but 2 root 6 so we have to find the factors for the 6 so that the product is 6 and the sum should be equal to 2 root 6 in the previous example there was no root term so easily we could just take the factors and write the middle term but since in this question there is a root term this question will be slightly different or th there will be a slightly different way to solve this problem. Now, what are the factors of 6? The factors of 6 are 3 into 2. 3 and 2 are the factors of 6. There are no other factors other than 1 into 6, which is again, it is not possible. Sum is not equal to 2 root 6. So, let's can also be written as root 6 into root 6. Okay, what is root 6 into root 6 is nothing but 6 because the root 6 is the power 1 by 2. 1 by 2 is nothing but root 6, right? Root 6 into root 6 is again 6, 1 by 2. If that is the base is same, then we have to add the power. So, we will get 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2. What is half plus half? That is nothing but equal to 1. So, uh, we will get 6 power 1 is nothing but 6. The value will be same but we are writing in a different form that is root 6 into root 6. Okay, now this is the product. Now, if you take the sum of root 6 plus root 6, I am sure you must have learnt in your uh, ninth class how to add the root terms. This is considered as 1 root 6 plus 1 root 6. So, what is 1 plus 1? It is 2 root 6. Okay, so we got sum as 2 root 6. So we are going to write root 6 plus root 6 instead of 2 root 6 in the equation. Therefore, 3x square minus root 6 plus root 6 into x plus 2 is equal to 0. Let us open the bracket. We will get 3x square minus root 6 into x root 6 into x again plus into minus is minus root 6 into x so plus 2 is equal to 0 now we have to take common between these two terms and these two terms here you can observe that there is no common term between the terms so what do we do now so now let us write again the value 3 as root 3 into root 3 and let us split this root 6 term as root 6 is equal to what is 6 3 into 2 and this can be written as 
root 3 into root t. We are, we are just splitting the root terms so that we get the common terms and 2 can also be written as root 2 into root 2. So, let us substitute the 3 value as root 3 into root 3, root 6 as root 3 into root 2 and 2 as root 2 into root 2 in the equation so that we can find the common terms now. So, 3 is what? root 3 into root 3 x square minus root 6 can be written as root 3 into root 2 x minus again root 6 is root 3 into root 2 x plus 2 can be written as root 2 into root 2 is equal to 0. So, now we can see the common terms. So, here root 3 and x is common again root 3 and x is common. So, let us take the common outside that is root 3 x then what will be left behind another root 3 and x is left behind then minus here root 2 will be left behind. So, since here minus is there whichever sign is there we are going to take that sign as common since minus is here. So, we are taking minus as common then what are the common terms here root 2 is common right. So, let us take root 2 as common and what is left behind is root 3 x. So, minus into plus will be minus if you take root 2 common again root 2 is left. So, this is equal to 0. So, here now we can observe that root 3 x minus root 2 is common again take out root 3 x minus root 2 as common what will be left behind root 3 x minus root 2 is equal to 0. So, let us equate each term to 0. So, we will get root 3 x minus root 2 is equal to 0 or root 3 x minus root 2 is equal to 0. Now, if we send this minus root to the right hand side, we will get root 3 x is equal to root 2, the sign will change or x is equal to root 2 divided by root 3, root 2 divided by root 3 or x is equal to the whole root of 2 by 3. So, similarly if we do here sending the minus root 2 to the, uh, to the right hand side we will get root 3 x is equal to plus root 2 or x is equal to root 2 divided by root 3 or x is equal to root 2 divided by root 3. So, we have got same roots therefore, we can write down therefore, the roots of, of equation 3 x square minus 2 root x plus 2 is equal to 0 are root 2 by 3 and root 2 by 3. So, this is how we solve this problem. If you have any doubts, please comment me below in the comment section. Now, let us solve the example number 6 from chapter 10 quadratic equations which says find the dimensions of the prayer hall discussed in section 10.1. I hope you remember that we had uh, discussed a problem about a prayer hall where and we had to represent that situation in the form of a quadratic equation. So, let us go back to that question and have a quick recap. So, the question says a charity trust decides to build a prayer hall having a carpet area of 300 square meters with its length 1 meter more than the twice its breadth. What should be the length and breadth of the hall? So, this is a pictorial representation where there is a prayer hall of a carpet area whose size is 300 uh, meter square. The area of this carpet area or the prayer hall is 300 meter square and the length is 1 meter more than twice its breadth. So, here we have to find out the length and breadth of the hall. The solution for this question I have already explained in my first video of quadratic equation that is the introduction part. If you have not watched that video, please find the link in the description box below or click the i button above. So, here suppose if we assume the breadth of the hall be x meters. So, let the breadth of the hall equal to x meters. Then what is the length? Length is 1 meter more than twice its breadth. Length is 1 meter more than twice its breadth. That is 2 times of the breadth is. So, breadth is x meters and length is 1 plus 2 x meters. Now, this is an rectangular area. Area of rectangle is given by length into breadth. Okay. So, this is the area. So, let us write down. Therefore, the area of the hall is equal to what is the length of the hall that is 1 plus 2x 
into breadth is x and also they have given us a value of the area that is equal to 300 meters square this is equal to 300 now let us multiply the brackets so x into 1 will be x plus 2x into x is 2x square is equal to 300 so let us arrange in the descending order of its power and send this uh, 300 to the left hand side so we will get 2x square plus x minus 300 is equal to 0 so we got a quadratic equation by solving this quadratic equation and finding the roots we will get the value of length and breadth since we have to find out the value of length and breadth in the question by solving this quadratic equation and finding it roots we will find the values of length and breadth so till here i had explained in the section 10.1 so now let us find the roots of this of this quadratic equation by uh, using factorization method or uh, splitting the middle term so what is the standard form of quadratic equation given by ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0 so if we compare with obtained quadratic equation the value of a is equal to 2 b is 1 and c is equal to 300 okay, we are just taking the numbers signs we are not considering here initially we have to take the product first where product is equal to a into c so what is a term is 2 and c is 300 so 300 into 2 will be 600 and we will take the difference since the sign of c is minus so we are going to take difference if it was plus we would have taken sum so difference should be equal to b that is what 1 so we have to find out the factors of 600 such that multiplying those factors we will get a product of 600 practicing those terms we should get value 1 so let us factorize 600 here so if we factorize we will get the factors so 2 3s are then 2 1s are 2 then carry 1 2 5s are 10 then 2 7s are 14 2 5s are 10 then again 3 2s are 6 carry 1 3 5s are 15 5 5s are and 5 ones are now let us group these terms let us multiply 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 is 8 so 8 into 3 is 24 if we multiply 5 into 5 we will get 25 so 24 into 25 is 600 right and what is 25 minus 4 is equal to 1 so this is the difference 25 minus 24 is the difference we obtain and this is the product so let us substitute 25 minus 24 as the middle term in the equation so we will get 2x square plus instead of 1 we will write 25 minus 24 into x minus 300 is equal to 0 so this is how we are splitting the middle term so let us open the brackets we will get 2x square plus 25 into x minus plus into minus will be minus 24x minus 300 is equal to 0 so let us take common between these two terms and these two terms so between these two terms only x is common so what is left behind 2x here plus 25 will be left behind when x is taken out then since minus is here we will take minus common and 24 can be written as 12 into 2 and 300 is 12 into 25 okay 12 into 25 is 300 so let us take 12 common 2x and minus into minus will be plus again if you take 12 outside 25 will be left behind is equal to 0 always make sure that these two brackets should always be same if you don't get the same values then there's something wrong that you must have done so now let us take 2x plus 25 common 2x plus 25 if you take common what is left behind x minus 12 is equal to 0 now let us equate uh, each bracket equal to 0 so we will get 2x plus 25 is equal to 0 or x minus 12 is equal to 0 so here if we send this 25 to the right hand side we will get 2x is equal to minus 25 or x is equal to minus 25 divided by 2 and here x is equal to sending minus 12 to the right hand side we are going to get plus 12 so these are the two roots which we have obtained from the quadratic equation so here we had assumed let the breadth to be x meters so the value of the breadth 
can be either minus 25 by 2 or equal to 12. Now, if you here observe, I've got minus 25. Anything which we are measuring like height or distance or anything like a counting number can never be negative. Always it has to be positive. You can never measure a height in negative terms, right? It is always 2 meters, 3 meters, 4 meters of height like that. You cannot say it can be minus 2 meters or minus 5 meters. So, always quantity is measured in a counting positive number. So, we have to consider the root here or the x value as equal to 12. x is equal to minus 25 is negative. We are not considering this x term. So, we will take x is equal to 12. So, write down since breadth cannot be negative, consider x is equal to 12 meters. Now, let us substitute this x in the length value which we have taken initially that is 1 plus 2x. So, what is length is equal to 1 plus 2x meters. Substituting the x value we will get 1 plus 2 into 12 or it is 1 plus 24 or the length will be 25 meters. So, this is the length and the breadth value is 12 meters. So, we got the length and breadth value. So, this is how we solve this problem. If you have any doubts, please comment me below in the comment section. In my next video, I will be solving exercise 10.2, question number 1 from chapter 10 quadratic equation. So, till then, please like my video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.